hi guys welcome back to linda reads how you guys doing you know how how is corona in your cities like has it eased up and how's the movement how is the lockdown you know, abj is almost back to normal right now except of course we still have to wear our face masks we have to social distance and all of those things so make sure you guys stay safe so uh today i want to talk about this book Mirinzo by Achalugo Chioma Ezekobe. So I actually bought this book at Roving Heights. I, I haven't really heard much about it. I've seen it on a couple of book bookstores like their Instagram pages and I was I was looking for books to buy when i was at this bookstore and i was like okay let me buy this because like i don't know the author you know instead of always going directly for someone who is famous i thought i should buy something different and i'm very glad i did you know like while i was at the bookstore i just decided to read the first chapter just to the first page just to get a feel of what the book was about and when i read it i was impressed you know like i saw some historical fiction inside some fantasy some magic and all those things so I was like, mm, i'm just going to get this book quickly so yeah and i'm very glad that i did so the book is written from the first person sorry third person narrative point of view you know the voice of god someone all seeing just telling you what's happening so yeah and this voice of god narrator tells us about this beautiful young lady called olivia and olivia is a lawyer um an Igbo girl born and bred in lagos you know so her parents are very comfortable they have like branches of electronics uh, businesses and all those things they have like boys apprentices working for them and all those things so like her life was generally great except one thing started happening to her she just started fainting like she'd go to a supermarket and faint she would go to a conference and faint she would faint at work just fainting at odd places and they would take her to the hospital and there was nothing clinically wrong with her like you couldn't see anything like then church too like prayers were not working nothing was working and her parents were like very strong catholic people so they didn't want uh, to think of alternative means but then what was happening was that she she was kind of like a reincarnation of one of her ancestors and her reincarnation came with gifts and the gift was kind of like power over rain and power over water so like it reminded me a lot about um avatar you know the airbender waterbender fire nation all those things you know so yeah uh, it's very reminiscent of that that's why i said there's some magic and fantasy inside so yeah um so there was only one way to solve this she needed to go do some rituals like in her village and all that and her parents weren't having it so you have to read the book to find out what happens like does she go to her village do the rituals and um get like full control over these her past or does she say oh i'm a christian i'm going to live in the city and keep fainting all over lagos you know? so yeah you can read it to find out so uh for the themes there's love there's marriage there's fantasy magic there's spirituality there's the clash of um religions so there's this clash between christianity and Igbo spirituality so uh, like I said earlier even though there was no there was no immediate solution to what was happening to her there was no explanation nobody could say okay this is what's doing this girl they didn't like they felt like it was devil worship to take her to the village and like explore other options you know so there's that clash of traditional uh, spirituality and then Abrahamic religions you know so yeah um that plays out very well in the book and i think i like that because the way the, the author wrote it she didn't write it in a way that oh you know like um babalao and odibia and idols and all those things no she she like empowered this traditional 
religion you know it's it's not relegated to a background of christianity casting and binding it and binding all ancestral spirits nothing like that which is something i found i loved i loved it because like especially in nigerian movies you know it's always christianity triumphing over traditional religions which is bad you know like you would never watch um a chinese movie or an indian movie and see a foreign god um a foreign god defeating their own indigenous gods you would never see that so i'm very happy with the direction of this novel it was it, it wasn't shitting on traditional religions if anything it was empowering them so i would i would like it if it were turned into a movie just so we can have a different voice from the regular nigerian movies where it's always christianity defeating traditional religion so you know if this movie if this book were made into a movie it would be great because it'd be a different story it would be empowering to traditional religions and all that so um so yeah that's the theme of the clash of uh, religions and then there's the fantasy and the magic the superstitious aspect why like, well it's the same thing as the is the spirituality aspect but i'm calling it fantasy and magic and superstition because i'm a skeptic so i don't believe that there are people who have the power to bend the rain or to stop the rain from falling or make the rain fall or command water to do their bidding you know it's it sounds fantastical to me like it's magic so mm, even if there are people who can do that i don't think it's it's some gift it would probably be something that can be explained through science you know probably they study the weather they study the weather um the signs of the weather you know like and they know when it's about to rain or when the rain is about to go you know? so yeah i'll just say they are intuitive people so yeah so um for love the theme of love different types of love you know there's uh, there's the regular romantic love uh, her sister was getting married and all of that she really loved the person she was getting married to but that was like um a primary character so sorry secondary character so it was like by the side something so there's also love for her like in the beginning she didn't have she wasn't in any romantic relationship but then as the story progressed she met someone and all of that so there's that love then there's also um filial love you know like love between the family like her her dad and her mom are really close and the dad called the mom milim which is like my millie and so like the children grew up calling their mother uh millie daddy which is like daddy's millie so yeah it's very interesting to see that and um yeah like i like the way the author wrote that you know like there's no dysfunction in the family like you can see the family dynamics like they're very close knit very very close with each other like there's mutual trust and respect in the family and yeah there's no bad blood even though her sister was getting married first she she didn't feel any type of way if anything her sister was her best friend and that didn't change even when her sister was getting married and if anything it was all these busybody aunties that were telling her nah your own is coming we'll pray for you but she she didn't care so it was kind of like uh, a case of the passerby crying more than the bereaved you know she she felt like no biggie her time would come so um what other theme did i mention um i spoke about love family spirituality fantasy yeah that's about it um so yeah it's a very it's actually the author's first first novel first published work so i would say she did a very great job because as someone who is trying to get published i know how difficult it is to actually finish something and feel like this is good enough for me to even send off to a publisher and then actually have it published and have it in books so i say a very big well done and congratulations to the author um shoma so uh yeah for a debut it's it's very good and the use of language is very it's very rich and very vibrant like it's i don't know maybe it's an evil thing i feel like 
Igbo writers have this gift, this natural gift for storytelling. Mm -hmm. And perhaps it's from their language because their language is very, it's very rich and, you know, it's like transferring mannerisms and expressions from Igbo to speaking English. Definitely, it would give it this different, unique flavor in English. So, like, I, I like reading um, fiction by Igbo writers. There's just something about the way they write it. So, yeah. Um, so, if you want to buy the book, it's at roving heights or the book market you can just buy it online from them and they will deliver or um, you can buy directly from the publishers Oof. i think parasia 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 oh wine press i beg your pardon wine press wine press um publishers so yeah you can buy directly from the publishers wine press um so yeah that's all if you guys have any book suggestions let me know let me know what you think about the review in the comment section and if you have any questions too you can leave them if you have book suggestions for me to read like i've read about three three novels in the past one week and i need more i'm running out of novels i can't be buy using my food money to be buying novels weekly so um Give me suggestions, Sha. Like I'm, I'm running out of novels to read. I need to stock up. I need to buy more. So yeah, um, leave a like and share and subscribe. Stay safe.